for many, many years, I always thought, why can't some company just come up with some kind of flooring that's waterproof and it's very strong to impact, maybe a little bit flexible so that if there's any floor deflection, the flooring won't crack or separate. And, you know, something that's, that, that encompasses all of these use case scenarios that would make a great flooring. And Allure looks like they're, they're onto it. You can think of me as a do-it-yourself type of person. I have um, a background in computer science and computer programming for the past 12 or so years. Um, but I've always been the type of person that likes to engineer and build various things, whether it's for a house, for cars, or things related to electronics. Um, so that's basically how I can describe myself. So I'm pretty much an all-around educated type of guy that has you know, um, experience in various types of fields. I've actually used Allure a few times now. The first time, I was just pretty much always, even before I knew what or who Allure was, I've always been looking for a solution when it comes to getting a flooring that's easy to install and is waterproof. You know, something that is waterproof, go figure. I mean, I've installed um, lots and lots of laminate flooring over many years over multiple houses, and it's great and everything, but it's just not waterproof. You know, it looks great, but once you get water on there and you don't, you're not there to clean it up, it's ruined. It's completely ruined, and you have to rip it all up. So I went to a Home Depot once, and I saw what appeared to be some plank flooring on a display on one of their end caps, and I picked it up. I was like, wait a minute, this thing is flexible. What is this thing? And I realized that that's basically how I encountered and got to learn about Allure flooring for my first encounter with that. So I bought a bunch of boxes and installed it in my basements. And, you know, it's not a beautiful basement, but I didn't want to have a nasty concrete flooring. And it's actually the one where it clicks and interlocks together, not the glue down ones. So I've, I've installed that one. And I've had that for quite a few years. And that's the first generation of it. So the basement has flooded so many times I can't even count. And there's no problems. So that was my very first encounter with real flooring. So here's the thing. The, the one that I installed in the basement looks really nice and everything, but it's just because it's understandable. It was like a version 1.0 of their product that I, it didn't look exactly like wood. So, it, it looked, and again, I don't, I'm not saying it's not good looking. I'm just saying that it's great for the, it was great for the basement, and it's just, it just was missing a little kind of type of polish that made it look great to be used throughout the rest of the house. So, all right, lo and behold, maybe a couple of years later, um, I'm in the middle of rebuilding a house now, you know, I need to rebuild this house. So I decided to say, let's take a look at what Allure has been doing throughout these years. Have they been doing any further R&D? Have they further advanced their um, flooring? So I went to Home Depot and took a look at their samples and their actual flooring with my own hands right there physically. And I couldn't believe that they've actually, they've actually made changes to it. They've advanced their design and look and feel of their flooring. And the newer their new generations of flooring is really amazing. Now it's actually, it looks pretty much like laminate flooring. So when I saw that, I was like, wait a minute, this is a game changer because I was actually thinking of doing laminate yet again. Um, so I ended up buying a bunch of boxes of the cherry walnut, if I'm not mistaken. And I did an entire kitchen so far with that. That's the one with the glue down strips. Now, first of all, what I wanted to say is that you know, I have a lot of experience, have much experience installing laminate flooring, you know, the wooden laminate. But when I got this one, I actually tried out the method of using a razor blade to score and, you know, score and snap the pieces. By using that technique, which I felt, you know, I felt guilty, like, oh, I always use hand, you know, I use, I use electrical tools to do my cutting. I can't just cut this with a razor blade. So I actually tried that out. When I tried that out, I couldn't believe how fast and easy the install went. I was actually doing like, I felt like a monkey jumping up and down because I was jumping down to get the, get the panel, jump up and jump down and glue it down, jump up, get the next one. And I was basically doing like what appeared to be um, interval training exercises. And within maybe two hours, the whole kitchen, which is maybe 16 by 20 foot area, it was all done, and that's including all the complex cuts and everything. So that's exactly what I did on my second time. Because of this experience, and I've been you know, still rebuilding the rest of the house, 
the flooring is super solid. It looks like real laminate or it looks like real wood pretty much. And it's super solid and the texture is beautiful. And I plan on doing the rest of the house with this as well. I want to explain something to you guys and you probably know this, but even as well as if anyone else is going to listen to this, whenever you simplify the use of any type of complex product that is usually left to the professionals so that the mainstream audience now gets involved, guess what? They're going to lack all those other areas of expertise and experience that mitigates these types of problems. Because you're broadening your reach to more people that are essentially your typical, you know, home people that are not like experienced builders or whatever the field may be of expertise, you're going to observe things that they're going to come out with. Like, hey, there's a smell here, or hey, um, my floor has three inches of waves in it, and when I install the flooring, it looks wavy. Why is that? You're going to get all sorts of strange, atypical, you know, complaints from them. It's because they're not too familiar with the underlyings and the prerequisites of what it means to install this. The same thing happens in many other fields like programming where it becomes the products have become more simple to, for people to write code. Now you're going to get amateurs that write code and say, but what about this? And like, well, you should have engineered that into it. So it's one of those type of scenarios going on with this. And one thing I want to say to those people is, guess what? This is vinyl flooring <laughs> and vinyl. Um, there is some type of um, olfactory response to when you're installing it, but it goes away after a while. It's, and it's not like it's, some of these people, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to say it's just that some people out there are not experienced in home rebuilding or um, construction in any way. So they'll smell this vinyl byproduct from, you know, coming out of the factory and they think, oh my God, is there something wrong with this? Am I going to die of a fumigation and, you know, poisoning? No, you won't. You'll be fine. Any type of vinyl product that you install, whether it's a lower flooring, whether it's those cheap 99 cent stick down tiles, or even those old ugly laminate carpeting or that old vinyl carpet that's like a big roll, it will provide a hint of some kind of smell and it's okay. The newer generation that is sold now, that is very tough and strong. I even dragged the table across it and I was like, oh man, I forgot I can't do that. But when I went to go look, it was actually intact. There's no evidence of any scratching. So the newer generation of flooring is pretty much very resistant to scratching, has a beautiful semi-shiny sheen to it and very deep engraved wood grain textures that I love. I mean, there's other textures I've noticed as well, but the one that I picked has a nice texture. Anyone that does go out there and buy this on their own, I would like to encourage them that, you know, as long as you have some basic measuring skills, um, you should be able to install it with absolutely no problems. And if you feel like there's a point in time where it's overwhelming or you can't do it, because we all feel these types of feelings whenever we reach an area of discomfort where we don't have experience in. Think of this as your training. Grab a few pieces and cut them up, you know, try installing them or just play around with them. Use them as throwaway practice pieces so that you build up your confidence. And when you're okay, do the rest of the house. It's fine. I recommend to customers that if you're going to do flooring, a couple of tips and pointers. I see a lot of people out there just throw the flooring down and they don't even remove their, you know, the baseboard molding all around the home. I'm a fan of removing the molding first and then installing the flooring and leaving that quarter inch expansion gap and then putting the molding back on because every time I go to a home, I see the quarter round molding that's on the ground. To me, that means that the people were lazy. So just go the extra mile, remove the entire baseboard molding and install it, and then just put the baseboard molding back and it will cover that gap that is usually there for expansion purposes. Um, that, that, that's pretty much in a nutshell. I mean, we've talked about everything that I had to say, but it's a great flooring. I recommend it and I think it looks great. And I actually feel guilty because now the home that I'm rebuilding is gonna look better than my home now. And my home now has wood laminate flooring and I've had a couple of accidents here. <clears throat> it wasn't me, it was the other person.